What's up guys, Togs Magic here, and you guys are watching another editing tutorial. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't really watch these, but for those of you who do, appreciate it. You know, leave a like if you guys are enjoying these. Now, um, for this episode, I don't really know what to call this, but if you see my 3D motion tracking tutorial, then you'll have a little bit of an idea of the problem that happens, right? So the text is far back there, right? And as you can see, it's behind like this wing, this, uh, this plane wing right here but how can we get the text to disappear when the wing is there so one way you could do this is you can go command y and you can make a new solid and call this mat and then we could just keyframe and we could mask out where the thing is so for example we could just go like this and try to put that right there and keyframe it and move it but that's really tedious, and what we can end up doing is put that above our text and then set it to alpha inverted so the text disappears. But that's really tedious and it takes a long time, and it's really annoying, and it will work in some scenarios. So if you're working in a maybe a complicated composition and you have to do that, then you know, go for it. But I'm gonna show you guys a much easier way where you can mask out tasks when it's behind objects like this. So all you gotta do is when you click here, if you click the camera tracker, as you can see, we get a bunch of track points, right? Now, if we select them, go like this, then we can make solids from the track points. So for example, you create a solid right here. As you can see, that's the same rotation. Actually, I'm gonna redo that because um, the rotation is kind of off. So basically, you just wanna pick a couple track points from the camera tracker and try match the match the, so uh, match the solid you're trying to put the the solid against. So as you can see, that's pretty good for now, right? And I'm just gonna scale this up like this. And as you can see, that looks really really ugly, right? But if you go Command Shift Y and make this a black solid, which is what it needs to be, then all you guys gotta do is turn this off, mask out where it needs to be. Pay, pay close attention because this is awesome. So we could go like that. Like down here. Cross. Then all the way back up. And in one simple mask, as you can see, now this is masked out and it stays on that side. So it's pretty sick, it's not perfect, but now when we go alpha inverted mat, then text disappears when it's exactly behind this, which is really, really useful. So say we wanted to do another one, right? We could go, we could put it right here, we could select a bunch of these points, you know, whatever. So we could create solid right there. And then we could also first, first of all, scale this up. And then we go command shift Y, make it black again, and yes, it needs to be black because we need to select alpha inverted. Uh, it only works for black. So now when we turn this layer off, and we can mask it out again, just like this. Boom, there we go. So now when we turn it back on, it's black, right? But now we run into a little bit of a problem, right? How are we going to link this to the 3D text? when it already has a track mat linked to it. Well, I'll show you guys, it's really not that hard. All you guys gotta do is duplicate your camera and then pre-compose all three of these layers. And then you can get this pre-composition if we solo this and turn on the press transparency grid. Pretty much it's just this, except this mat, this one needs to be on. So now, if you go back, or not in the main comp, if you go into here, it's just these two layers and they're moving around, right? But if we unsolo that, then it looks like this. And now we can make the pre-comp alpha inverted to the text. So now both of them are masked out when they need to be. It looks really, really easy. As you can see, it's a bit glitchy there. You can move the you can move the solid around a bit if you guys really need to. This is pretty much the best way to do it. It's definitely a lot easier than keyframing the solid frame after frame, because that will take a lot of time, especially in complicated cinematics like this. But as you can see, this looks really, really nice. I mean, it's kind of good to you sometimes, but you have to button. You can just do the same step for as many solos as you need. Do the exact same thing. I'm sure this will help you guys in a lot of scenarios if you guys are serious editors like I am. So share this to your friends if they want to see this. If you guys have any questions, throw them down in the comments or hit me up on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.